Did I wear this shirt last week's video? Yes. Do I? Did I wear it next week's video? I think I did, but I'm not really sure. This shirt is so comfortable and it's cold outside. I was going to put on my onesie that I got last year from Daisy, but it's just, I just didn't want to change, so. I know why. aka freaking bulldozer and welcome back to another video on my youtube channel today it is time to do my least favorite thing ever and that is ruin my bookshelves which as you can tell i did and actually this shelf and the sarah j mash shelf are the ones that are the most ruined um, because I read, I mostly read Sarah J. Mass books this year, which is, like, cool. Um, anyway, so I have a stack of 20, well, a little less than 29 books, because some of these I read on the Kindle, and I got from the library, and I didn't have time to get the physical copies from the library, so that was stupid on my part, I should have done that, but I, I did, I didn't, so, anyway, so, we're gonna talk about the 29 books I read this year, we're gonna give them my ratings, we're not gonna talk about what I, I mean, we're gonna talk about what I thought about them, kind of, but we're not gonna go, like, super in depth, I say that, but I could already, I could already, I already know I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna ramble, like, I'm rambling right now. <laughs> Let's get into my year in books. Is a thing that Goodreads does, and it puts all of your books in like stats, and it's really cool. So why don't we get into doing that, right? Yeah. All right. So this year I read a total of twelve thousand one hundred and thirteen pages. But you have to knock off probably that one hundred and thirteen pages because they counted one of my books twice. And it was a comic book. So realistically, I probably read 12,000 pages. 12,000. Yes, 12,000 pages. It's probably how many pages I read realistically. Across 30 books, but again, they had one book twice, so 29. My goal was to read 30 books this year, and I didn't end up doing that. Um, I probably could have, but I didn't. So anyway, my shortest book was 64 pages. That was Becoming the Dark Prince by Carrie Maniscalco. And my longest book was Kingdom of Ash, which came off to 984 pages. My most, my average length of books I read was 403 pages. I like big books, um, and I don't really know why, but I really do. My most popular book I read this year was The Hunger Games. Um, first time I ever read it, so I have a reading vlog on that if you want to go check that one out. And then the least popular was Goldie Vance Volume 3 by Hope Larson. My average rating for 2019 was a 3.8 stars. 3.8 stars. And then my highest rated book I read this year on Goodreads is A Court of Mist and Fury, which is a 4.66 average, which is pretty cool. And then my first review of the year was for the first book I read this year. And so that's a nice way to segue into this. Let's talk about the books, yeah? Yeah. I brought up a bottle of water, so I know I'm going to need it. Hmm. Okay, so the first book I ended up reading this year... I gave 2.5 stars, and that is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. This book I really wanted to like because it was the most hype book of 2018. I read it for a YouTube video, which I will also leave linked down below in the description box. Um, or in the eye, one of the two, I don't really know, but the, it'll be somewhere on the video. And so I was really, really excited to read this book because everyone's talking about how fantastic it was. But when I read it, I just found myself getting very bored. I wasn't very interested in the story. And if you watched my least favorite books of 2019, you will also know that I thought this book was very simplistic. I thought it was very basic. I thought it was just like every other fantasy story with diverse characters. And they're not even that diverse because they're all straight. You know what I mean? 
So, I didn't really end up enjoying this book, which is very sad, because it was the most hyped of 2018. And it is also super pretty, and that's something I will always say. This book is freaking gorgeous. And like the cover. Like, the cover is okay, but the it, naked is very pretty. The next book I ended up reading was a contemporary, which... My only contemporary of this year, and that was Always Never Yours by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegeman Broca. I ended up giving this book four stars. I don't really like contemporary, and I was very, I was, I was kind of bored during this story. But it was a contemporary, and I ended up finishing it, which is what I don't do when I, when I read a lot of the contemporaries. So I thought it deserved a pretty high rating. Um, it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, I'm pretty sure. But I don't like Romeo and Juliet, so um, hey, you get that, because you were better than Romeo and Juliet. So I think it wins. It wins something on there, right? Right. Okay, so the next book I read was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Finally, I know, I finally got to this book, guys. Are you proud of me? I hope you're proud of me. So I ended up giving this book five stars, but I did, it would be a low five. And that is something I say all the time, like, this book is like a five, but it's like a low five, or it's like a high five, right? It's not just a five. There's a low five and there's a high five. And this is a low five, because I enjoyed this book, and I found it good, and I was very intrigued, but it took me over a hundred pages to get into, and I don't care for Nina. Like, unpopular opinion, but Nina kind of sucks. And everybody loves Nina, but I could care less about her. And I don't know why so many people like Nina. Like, the best character in this entire book... Inej? I like Inej. You know, she's pretty cool. Inej is pretty, pretty cool, because she's like a little... Little poom poom, you know? But Nina is the worst. I don't care who's the best, but it's definitely not Nina. My personal opinion, but I didn't give this book five stars. But... I didn't pick up the sequel. Like, I didn't pick up the sequel, and I don't think I'm going to. I tried to pick it up, but again, I couldn't get into it. it I got like 50 pages into it, and I was still bored, and so I put it back down, and guess what? Your girl never picked it back up, and I really don't care. Like, I know, I already know how it ends, and I don't care, so that's, that's the tea. Ugh, cringe. Okay, so the next book I read this year was um, Goldie Vance Volume 2 by Hope Larson. I read a lot of, like, comic books, graphic novels. I read a lot of graphic novels this year, but I ended up reading Goldie Vance Volume 2. I read the, I read the first one last year, and I ended up giving it two stars. Um, I don't really remember why. The next book I ended up reading that year, this year, this year, not that year, the, le the next, oh my god. The next book I read this year was the first book I read this year that I actually ended up, like, really enjoying, and that is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, and then I also ended up reading the sequel, Wondersmith, The Colony of Morgan Crow, and I gave them both five stars. Now, let me just tell you, these are my life. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I went to bed last night debating if these are my favorite books of all time. And I'm gonna say they are. I've only read them once, but it's a very big, like, it's a fight between the Nevermore series or the Akatar series. But it'd be the second one, because that the second one of the Akatar series goes against Nevermore, on my favorite book of all time. And I don't know which one wins. I'm rereading this book next, this, this series next year, and I'm also going to be rereading Akatar, that series, next year. So I guess, I guess at the end of 2020s, all the books I read, we'll find out which was my actual favorite of all time. But I love these books so much. They're so much fun. People compare them to Harry Potter, and if you do that, we're not friends because Harry Potter is bad and these are good. And so that's, those are my opinions. Obviously, if you like Harry Potter, go ahead, but don't you dare. If you like Harry Potter, you can't hate this. I'm sorry, you just can't. It's kind of like um, Akatar and Enchantment of Ravens. If you like Akatar, you can't hate Enchantment. It's just, it's just the laws of books, and these are fantastic, and everyone needs to read them. So the next book I have an entire Goodreads review on, so if you want to know more thoughts on this book, 
go check out my Goodreads. And if I remember, I'll leave a link down to this Goodreads review in the description box. So yeah. But the next book I read was My Plain Jane by Cynthia, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I gave the book four stars. Um, I read it on vacation in March or June. I don't remember which one. Uh, but I did end up reading it one of those times. And I enjoyed it um, because I read the first one on vacation in June of 2018. And when I, I, I did the same thing for this one. I'm pretty sure it was in June. I think. I'm pretty sure. I could look when I put it on here as finished. But I'm not going to because that's more work. But I gave this book four stars. Um, it was okay. I don't remember why I didn't give it five stars. Um, I think it was something about... I honestly don't remember. Wow, I'm doing great, guys. Don't you love my videos about wrapped up in the entire year? But I ended up giving this book four stars. I like it. It has deckled edges. People don't like deckled edges, but I, I, I kind of enjoy them. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say for that book because I really don't remember a single thing about that book. I remember the plot, but I don't remember my feelings on it. So, like, I was surprised I gave it four stars, so I can't help you with my opinions on that one. <laughs> Alright, so the next book I ended up reading was American Fix Inside the Opioid Addiction Crisis and How to End It by Ryan Hampton. Um, I ended up only being able to read to page 140, and that was probably where it stopped being good. Um, and I'll get into why in a second, because I had to go, it had to go back to the library, so I never got around to finishing it. But, um... Basically, my mom read this book and, on vacation, and she never got around to finishing it. And I was very intrigued by it because, you know, drugs are, like, drugs are such a big problem in our world at the moment. And so I'm very intrigued on reading up on it. And Brian Hampton, the author of the story, is actually a recovering drug addict. And he's also a politician. So the reason I, he stopped being good around page 140, 100... 35 or whatever was because he started talking about more about politics instead of his addiction and I just I don't know I can talk about politics but I can't read about politics I just I have no interest in reading about them none I have no interest but I do it was okay yeah I give it three stars but I also didn't finish it so take with that what you will um but it could also be a hard read. I think I did cry at some point. I don't remember. I feel terrible. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Five stars. Boom! The next book I read was Restore Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the revival of this series. No! But this is a revival of the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi. And um, I really like this book. I gave it five stars. I think it was, I thought it was very good. It came in with a new, like more of a story to tell. The ending, whoa, I think I, I cried. I have videos of me when I finish this book. Um, If I can find them, here you go. Y'all, I forgot how much I love, I love these characters. Uh, I was in a slump and I didn't want to read, but as soon as I picked up this, I'm laughing, smiling, Tara, your writing style has changed so much because this was your first series you ever written and it's just... It's so sad. It's so cool how it all ties together. And also, why? Tara Moffey, are you doing this to me? I was, like, fine with the last trilogy. I was fine with how it ended. But are you serious? Are you freaking kidding me? Now, now I'm not okay. So, great. That was, that was the end, guys. That's, that's how it ended. That's how it ended. Great. Now I have to wait for it to come out in paperback, so... Uh... That was that. Hope you enjoyed them. But yeah, five stars. I really liked it. I did. I pre. I pre-ordered the uh, 
defy me and you're like, why did you pre-order it? It's already out. Because I gotta have it in paperback. I could have got it at Barnes & Noble with deckled edges and signed, but it was in hardcover and I don't work like that. They all have to match. So I have to, I pre-ordered it. It comes out February 6th. So, you know, I will be reading Defy Me next year. Um, and maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just reread the entire series all around. But also, the ending of this kind of makes me need to pick it up. I don't know. Reading next year's reading of the year, I don't know. The next book I ended up reading is called All Summer Long by Hope Larson. I ended up giving it three stars. It is a graphic novel or a comic book. I think it's a graphic novel. It's just really short, so I don't feel like it should be called a novel, but it's a graphic novel. So, hmm. I'm really struggling to make this video. Um, I read this book um, in one sitting. Um, I was at the Tattered Cover Bookstore in Denver, Colorado, because I was going to see the play Wicked, and I just ended up reading it. It was a quick read. It was it wasn't as hard to follow. Like it was pretty easy to follow what was happening in the events. It was more easy to follow the events than it is for Goldie Vance, which is her other graphic novel series. So yeah. That was pretty good. I don't know what to say. So after I read that book, I kind of got in a slump. I was it was I was in a slump when I read Restore Me, but I was at the bookstore, so I just picked up a graphic novel to read, and then I didn't buy it. Obviously, I just read it and put it back, right? Because you can do that at bookstores. I mean, they probably they would prefer for you to buy it, but it's a graphic novel. I'm not gonna spend ten dollars on a hundred page book. Anyway, I was I got in a slump, and so I had to find something that would be entertaining. Great, we're already at 20 minutes. I had to find something that would be entertaining and something that get me back in the reading mood. And so obviously, I picked up Acromath by Sarah J. Mass. Are you surprised? I'm not. I actually, I, I got my second copies of this this year, too. Um, now I have them in hardcover and in paperback, and if I can get them in the French, that'd be pretty great. Or Spanish. Because I know French, but I'm not fluent in it, and I have to take Spanish for my high school. So I'll become fluent in that. So I don't know. But I gave this book five stars. Obviously, it's fantastic. This is my favorite book out of the entire series. Then this is the book that's going up against Nevermore. Do I like Nevermore more, or do I like Akamath more? I don't know, but I love this book. I love it so much more. If you read this book, you know why. And I'm scared to reread the entire series next year because of things that happen in this book. I gotta read the first book now. I don't know. It's a lot. It's really not, but it is for me. So then I ended up having to read a poetry book for school. And fun fact, I didn't end up finish the I didn't end up finishing this poetry book until school was over, so I did great on that one. And that is In the Absence of the Sun by Emily Curtis. I gave it three stars. I don't like poetry, so I just picked something that was free for, on Amazon, on, on Kindle Unlimited. It was a free poetry book. I picked it up. I read it. It was fine. Three stars. I don't know. Um, then I ended up picking up my most my absolute mostly hot, most hype. <clears throat> and then I picked up my most anticipated book of 2019, like my most, the tippity top of all of them. And I ended up DNFing it. Yes, um, I DNFed it on page 142. That's what the sticky note says, if you can see it. Um, and I. <laughs> I talked about more about this in the my least my least favorite books of 2019. And it's sad because Nikolai is my favorite character. I have a Nikolai plushie. And like look at him. Oh I love you so much. But this book, I just don't I think this book wasn't as good as we all hoped for. And I know a lot of people enjoyed it, but, you know, I watched reviews of this book, and, like, spoilers, if you haven't even read the first, the original series, I'll put it down, and when I pick it back up, spoilers will be over. But, Alina apparently died, and I didn't know that. Like, she faked her death. And so, when they started talking about it in the book, I was like, wait, when did she die? And then, this is a spoiler for this book, and the spoiler for this book will be over 
when I picked the book back up. But apparently the Darkling's actually not dead. And I'm just like, dude, Sarah, sorry, dude, Lee, you've already played that card in the original series. You can't revive someone again. There's so much more possibilities you can do in the magic realm. And you revive Alex, the Darkling, right? Like, why? Why would you do that? And I'm pretty sure his name's Alexander. I'm not really sure, but anyway. Anyway, so, yes. And another thing I didn't like about this book, besides the spoilers and the fact that it was very confusing, was the way it was written. Um, the original series was written in a first-person present tense, I'm pretty sure, and it fits that story a lot better than her six different characters' point of views like past tense, third person, boom, bang, bang, boom. Like, that's what this book's written in, and it doesn't fit this story. I don't think, I don't think there was an, I don't think there was enough going on to have to jump through and go to six different people. Like, Six of Crows, which I, I, I don't want to get out of the stack, like, there was a lot going on, and that, I think that was written, like, that was the way it needed to be written. The way it was written, I think, was how it needed to be written. But I don't think... That this is how that needed to be written, and I know she pro she obviously found a new writing style, but I don't think it, it specifically fits this story or this world that she's built. I don't know. It's just my because I, I couldn't get connected to any of the characters, and Nikolai is my favorite. So someone should explain to me why I was so bored, even in Nikolai's point of view. But, but I was, and it was very sad. Bless you. <gasps> oh. Oh no. <laughs> uh. Well, since you all fell out, I just won't put you in your box. Okay. So, then, after I DNF that book, I was babysitting. And this is, I ended up finishing the poetry book while I was babysitting as well. And so I needed something else to read. And I had Kendall Unlimited, and The Hunger Games was on there, so I started reading The Hunger Games. I'm pretty sure this was on Kendall Unlimited. I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure this, it was on Kendall Unlimited. I had, I already had the version of it, so I assume it was on Kendall Unlimited, but if it wasn't, I don't remember when we bought it, because I just don't remember. But I ended up reading the entire Hunger Games trilogy. I gave the first book five stars, I gave the second book four stars, and the third book three stars. Um, I also got the tenth. Are these the tenth? These are, it, it's tenth, right? These haven't been out for 30 years, I don't think. Um, but I ended up getting the box set of the 10th Anniversary Collector's Editions. I think the 10th, if they're 30, they're either 30 or 10. I don't really remember which one it is. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed them. Again, there's a whole entire reading vlog on them. I feel like I already mentioned that, but I don't know why I would have. But yeah, there's an entire reading vlog on these books. Um, so if you guys want to go watch that, you can. I listened to the audiobooks and read along. I didn't buy these until after I had finished all of them. I enjoyed the first one. I like the relationship in the second one more than I do in the first one. Like, I love the movies. Like, people, I have to say, The Hunger Games, those movies are really good adaptions. Um, and I even have a movie review on them before I read the books. So, but I really did end up enjoying the books, except the third one. I didn't like the third one. There was way too much pod action because the pods are like supposed to be like challenges or something there was way too many of them so i'm glad the movie cut some of them out because there was way too many all right the next book i read was we went to barnes and noble we didn't buy anything but we went there because we go there i look at the shelves i look at amazon and i say well it's cheaper on amazon so i'm gonna buy it on amazon and i add to my goodreads want list um i know that's why bookstores are going out of order but i'm just saying it's a lot cheaper, and would you rather get one book for 20 bucks or two books for 20 bucks? The two. Duh. That's why I have an addiction. It's why my shelves are full of books I haven't read. Anyway, <clears throat> so at Barnes & Noble, I picked up a, another, another graphic novel. 
I go to bookstores just to read the graphic novels. And I ended up reading um, Mara Tidebreaker by Danielle Page, and it's illustrated by Stephen Bryan, I'm pretty sure. And I gave it three stars. It's a superhero book. I don't like superheroes, but nonetheless, there we are. Um, I have, you guys, can you guys see? Oh, you can't. So, I read the first two books in her actual series, Dorothy Must Die series, and I'm going to be rereading it. I think I want to. I want to reread it next year in 2020 um, because I saw Wicked and I was like, I kind of want to read, I kind of want to read Daniel's page his series on it again. So I do want to reread them and I did enjoy them, so I was like, I'll just read that while I'm at Barnes & Noble. And so I did that. I can't believe I've been 30, filming for 30 minutes. I mean, I can. I, I can feel it, but I just also can't believe it. Oh, no. All right. Come here, Rez. Come here. Okay. Hi. So, um, then after I finished The Hunger Games, I got in another slump. Um, and it was terrible. Okay. Sorry, it stopped. Um, but I got in another reading slump after I finished The Hunger Games, and it was really, really bad. And I know why I got in a reading slump, and it was because I felt so bad about what I was reading. And I do want to make a video on that kind of, like, reason why. I don't want to say in this video, but I do want to make a video on it. And so, um, Kingdom of Mass on Instagram, I'm sorry, I'm, like, moving in my chair. Kingdom of Mass on Instagram halted a readathon for the release of Crescent City, which was supposed to come out January 31st, but then it got pushed back to March something. Um, and so with that, we were supposed to read the all of Sarah J. Mass's books. So I bought them all, and of course, I ended up reading the entire Throne of Glass series. You're wondering where the last one is in the sixth one. I'm going to get into that in a second. But I ended up reading the first six. The first six in this series, okay? Um, and I, I love them. I love the characters. Um, so, <coughs> oh my gosh. So yes, I ended up reading this entire series. It's really much, it's a lot of fun to just hold all the books up at once, so I will just do anything to hold them all up at once. It hurts to hold them all up at once, but it's fun, so I guess we're just gonna do it. So, let me go over the ratings. So, I gave the, um, the Assassin's Blade four stars. I think I would have liked this one a lot more had I read the series, like, the first book before I read this one. I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more. But I gave it four stars, and I love it more than four stars. But when, as of reading it, as of when I finished it, I gave it four stars. But if I was to reread it, I do think I would give it five because I now, I'm more attached to Sam and the characters, right? This is the first book I read in the series, so I was kind of confused with all the characters, um, so I wasn't very attached to it. Then, I read Throne of Glass. I gave it four stars. Um, it was good. You can really tell that this is her first, her first, like her, her dupe, dupe, debut, debut! Boom! I've been saying day, day, not debut. I've been saying like debut, 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 de debut. I've been saying it wrong for so long, and mom's like debut. I was like, yeah, debut. That's what it is. I couldn't say it though. But you can tell this is her Dubé novel. No, it's not Dubé anymore. Du debut, debut. You can tell this is her debut novel because it's not very well written. Um, you know, things are hard to read. But I gave it four stars. It was pretty good. Then I read Crown of Midnight. I gave it five stars. This one, or Empire of Storms, is probably my favorite out of the entire series. Five stars. It was fantastic. Her writing improved so much from Throne of Glass to this one. So, yeah. And I love this one. So, yes. And, th oh. Oh, and while reading that, I got to babysit another. I gotta go. I gotta go back to babysitting, and I read *Becoming the Dark Prince* by Carrie Maniscalco, and I think I gave that four stars. Or oh yeah, I gave it four stars. 
and I would have given it five, but I thought it was too short to be four to be five stars. So I ended up giving Become the Dark Prince four stars. So yeah. Then I finished Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. I gave it four stars. Um it was so boring. The beginning, it was so boring. But I pushed through because mom said I should. Because I've heard, like, I know a lot of people, like, Kingdom of Mass, this is her favorite one out of the entire series. My least favorite. My second least favorite. Um, and I just don't, it was very boring. I don't like Manon. I don't like Dorian. And um, I like Selena. I like Aelin. I like Rowan. Um, but I didn't like this book a lot because I was very bored for the first half of it. And it's a big book. So the first, being bored for the first 300 pages kind of sucks. But the ending was really good and that's why it ended up getting four stars because the ending was so phenomenal. Then I read Queen of Shadows. I gave it five stars but a low five stars. Because like it felt like not a lot happened. Like it was a good book. And, like, a lot happened, but at the same time, not a lot happened. The best part of this book is Aelin and Rowan's reunion. The best part of this entire book is when they're reunited. We can fight, we can argue about it, but you know I'm being, you know I'm telling the truth. If you read this series and you've read this book, you know that the best part of it is the reunion between Aelin and Rowan. And, hey, remember, he likes the gold one, so... Remember that. And then I read Empire of Storms. And I was surprised to find out that some people think this one is like the worst one in the series. Um, I'm sorry. I think you're reading the wrong one. Because this one is like the best. I don't know. Um, again, like I said, Crown of Midnight or this one are the best. I don't really know. I give this book four, five stars. Five stars. Low five stars. I think I already said that, but yeah. I didn't give this book five stars. The ending was so good. I enjoyed myself through the entire one. I wasn't bored at any point. It was very, very good. And um, we started to get characters from the Assassin's Blade back in here. And I'm just saying, I loved that. I, I loved that so much because I love those characters. And so... Yes. This one. This one's really good. I like this one. Five stars. Um, then I ended up reading An Enchantment of Ravens. Wow. You pick up this book, and then you pick up this book in the same hand. You can really tell a difference. Both in cover textures and size. Five stars as well, because I read... Um, Empire of the Storms, and I was like in the mood. I tried to pick up other books, but I was in the mood for Fae and in the mood for fairies. So I picked up this one because um, I had bought it, but I hadn't known I was going to read it. And then the same, like the er like the day before, um, Cindy by Red from Red Bo Red with. Oh my God! So I didn't know when I was going to read this book. But, uh, Cindy from Red with Cindy ended up reading this, like, the day before. She posted, like, a wrap-up for, like, July or whenever. And she talked about how fantastic this was and how if you like Akatar, you have to like this one. And she was right, because this book is the cutest book I've ever read. This is what I need. I need fantasy. Like, if you're going to make me read a contemporary, give me some fantasy in it, because this book is so good. It's perfect. I talk about it in my favorite books of 2019, so go watch that if you really want more information on this. But it's so, so good. Then I ended up reading the third volume of Goldie Vance. I gave it three stars. It was by, it's by Hope Larson as well. Um, I don't know what else to say. I gave it three stars. It was fine. Um, and then we get to my... Uh, Second most disappointing book of this year, Capture the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco, or Capturing a Husband, if you wanted to appropriately title this, Capturing a Husband would be the way you do that. I gave it two stars. I DNF'd it on page 283, I'm pretty sure, or before that. Oh, no, I think I just gave it a higher rating. Oh, God. That's bad. Um, I have an entire 
review on it on my Goodreads. So yeah, I did have it on page 250 is what it says on here. Um, and that's because it turned into a romance. If I wanted to read a romance, I would have picked up a romance. Okay? And like, this book is fantasy, is a fluffy fantasy romance. And it's done fantastically. And I love it. It's one of my favorite books. Right? This one is just romance. It's supposed to be a mystery thriller. And it's already hard for me to read mysteries because I'm more of a fantasy person than I am when it comes to mystery or thrillers. And the fact that it was more of a romance didn't work for me and I did not like it so I DNF'd it. But I have an entire review on it, I have an entire uh, reading vlog on it, and it's also mentioned in my least favorite books of 2019. So, you can, I have a whole bunch of content on that video if you guys are interested in it. Alright, and then I got a little surprise. It was my birthday, and my mom surprised me with this book, and it is the best book I've ever been surprised with. Like, I, I heard about this book this year, and I was like, oh, that sounds good. So I was like, I, I would pick it up, right? But then, but then my mom got me an Illumicrate book box, and in that was Kingdom of Souls by Rena Baron. And oh my goodness, this book is so, so good. And this is what I, when I read Children of Blood and Bone, and they're saying how it's so good, it's so original, it's like the best fantasy story of 2018 or whatever, you know, I believed them. And nobody, I haven't heard anybody really talk about this book. And why? Why did you guys give so much love to Children of Blood and Bone, yet you never even talk about this one? Because this book is so good. I mean, just the reason this girl did what she did is original. I've never read a story where the girl sacrifices a bit of themselves for their mother. And that's all I'm gonna say. Because that's all you need to know. The main character, oh my god, I don't remember her name. Araya. Araya? Um, Araya. Um, Araya, this girl right here, very pretty. I love the cover too. It's a, a, it's a special edition and you best believe I'm going to get the uh, actual version as well. Um, but Araya, 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 Araya um, does something to help to try and prove herself to her mom and it's because of that that this entire book takes place. I give it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The writing style is a little bit hard to get into because of using quotations. She uses apostrophes for when people speak and if that's not the most confusing thing I've ever read in my entire life, I don't know what is because that's very hard to get used to. Very difficult, right? Um, so that's a little bit of a downside but it was so good. And I did predict the ending. I did predict the ending. Like on page 100 or whatever, I was like, Mom, I think blah, 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 blah. She, she is that. He is this. This is what it happened. This is like they, the boom, that. And then I was right. So besides that, I love this book. And the final book I read this year, I can't believe I went out on a poop. I read this book. I read Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass, and I'm just saying the series, like the names of these books are so much fun to say. Throne of Glass, Sarah J. Mass, Kingdom of Ash, Sarah J. Mass, like fun, but I give this book three stars, and I really didn't want to finish it. I wanted to do an epic, but it's a 989 page book, 84, and I had a little over a hundred pages left and I just couldn't bring myself to get so far through a book and then DNF it when I had a hundred pages left and it's almost a thousand pages so I finished it and I gave it three stars and so many people like the people really like this book and I, like I can get where you're coming from but 
Sarah J. Mass does not have a good way to keep her last books in a series interesting. Because Akawar was very boring and slow, and the reason the only reason I gave it five stars was because of what happened on page 666. And in this book, n nothing happened. I mean, spoilers, Graviel died. Why? Did he need to die? No, he didn't. But he did, and I don't get why, but he did. Um, so... You know, just I thought of like I was very bored. Like a, not a lot happened for a thousand-page book. Not a lot happened, and it was very disappointing, very sad. And I wish this book was better. But I know she's been like two years writing this hunky hunk, and I just I'm sad I didn't like it. I'm sad that I didn't like the end of this series. Oh, you're probably wondering about what about Tower of Dawn? Yeah, no, I didn't read that. I hate Carol. Why would I read a book all about him? You're right, I wouldn't, so, hmm. But I will say that the saddest part about this book um, is the fact that Aelin and Knox did not get to have their reunion. I know, a weird thing for me to want, but I'm sorry, you gave Knox and fake Aelin a reunion, but you won't give me the real thing. Cause I love Knox. He is like, if you go, if you look at all my Goodreads reviews, you'll see that I have a favorite character, like the best character of the book is in the, at the end of the review. And Knox is the best character out of Throne of Glass. Fight me, but he is. And so I don't even get a reunion between the two. I don't know, but I love seeing um, Elias, and I liked seeing Ansel, and so that was that was it. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I'm gonna give it. A, give it if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe down below because I post videos every single Monday. And since I post every single Monday, I will see you guys all in my next video, which is also coming up next week. And hey. Oh my god, that was the cringiest thing I've ever done. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, guys. Alright, thumbnails? Oh my god, thumbnails. <sighs> no, let's just... sitting in a chair I'm about to try to pick up <sighs> oh my gosh is this even all of them and I can't even pick them up <laughs> it's too much ow I didn't want to close Them. Don't worry. I love you all. Bye. I'm gonna die because I held too many books. But I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> I know i I know I'm holding on to.